right guys, so today is actually gonna be a, a really chill day. We're actually picking up a load right by the uh, terminal and we are headed to uh, Colorado. So I'm actually excited about that because it's my first time going to Colorado. So it's gonna be an interesting drive. Uh, everything I'm, everything we're gonna see is we're gonna see for the first time. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna try to tag you guys along, show you guys the steps. Um, I may forget one thing or two, cause like I said, it's hard to multitask while you're you're doing all this, but you want you know, at the end of the day, number one is priorities being safe. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, do things distracted. Everything out, out there is hands free, you know, in case anybody from corporate is watching. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not texting, I'm not driving, I'm not recording things without it being hands free. But yeah, of course, safety is first. But I'm gonna try, try my best to tag you guys along um, so you guys can kind of see what being a truck driver is all about. Um, it's not hard. It's not easy, but it's not hard either. But it's, it's like I said, once you get a feel of...
lights are working. Good, good, good. All right, we set. Got my license plate. All right, back. Check the tires. First, I want to check the inside ones too. Lights work. Perfect. All right, we all set. Oh, I didn't check the pins on this side. <laughs> That's really important. Because it could be great on that side, but it's not good on this side. And we are good on this side too. See that? We're locked in. All right, let's get it. We are good to go. I got this thing right here, the, the the cattle guard. That thing unlocks on me sometimes. So I just always make sure it's locked so it doesn't open up when I'm driving. All right, so we did that pre-trip on the trailer. We're all set. We're gonna go ahead and go to the shipper and uh, do what we were supposed to do 30 minutes ago. So hopefully this does not mess up my time frame, but I'm gonna make it work when I'm on the road. So I'll see you guys at the shipper. <music> We just got to the shipper yard. I'm gonna go check in with the, uh, the guard. Hopefully she doesn't give me no drama like the first time. And then uh, we'll get our trailer and then we'll swap it out. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Just hold on, hold tight. <laughs> expecting it of course you know with trucking there's always something right always something so when I'm prepared like when I started each shift I'm always prepared for stuff to pop off you know what I'm saying like it could be the trailer it could be something off the truck it could be something wrong with the paperwork it could be something it could be waiting time at the shipper it could be it, I mean the list goes on as a trucker you guys know what I'm talking about but for those of you who are not truckers who don't know what I'm talking about that's that's what happens so in this particular situation listen up um, the door, I was telling you guys that door, they were saying it was having issues since last Tuesday and no one came and fix it. And so I was trying to put my lock on it. It closed, but it was, it was still open on the top of the, of the trailer. So yeah, it was, it was not a good thing. I'm going to go park right here so I can finish my paperwork on my tablet here and then we're going to hit the road. But yeah, I took like 20 minutes. We had to call one of the yard dogs, uh, the yard guys to come in and, uh, and open it up and close it properly. Um, hopefully, when I drop it off, there's someone there who could do the same thing because I'm not too familiar with these type of doors and I'm not trying to spend too much time with it. So, but anyways, yeah, that's what happened with that. The door was having issues. I'm gonna park right here and finish my, I gotta finish putting documentation about this trailer and stuff. I'm also gonna put that it's damaged as well. So I don't gotta pay for no damages because I didn't do nothing to this trailer. So. Let me finish this paperwork on the tablet or whatever I got to do here and then we're going to hit the road. I'm not going to record too much what's going on here because it's private information. But yeah, I'm just putting my, my, my documentation 
and all my uh, my BOL information that's on this BOL onto this tablet. And then once that's done, I submit it and then I we can hit the road. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then we out. So we got a little bit of traffic here heading towards Barstow on the on the 15. Uh, so since it's going really slow, I can kind of catch you guys up on, on my journey. Um, how I got started in trucking, all that good stuff, where I went to school, the process to go to school, how long the school take. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much in detail. I guess I wanna give you guys a, a decent amount of information. And if I can't give it to you guys all in this video, then for sure the rest of it will be on the next video. But um, yeah, I started like around December of last year, uh, 2022, and I was just fed up, man. I, I was doing, uh, I was in a den, I was in, a, I was in dentistry. I was working at a dental office, and because of COVID, hear me out. Because of COVID, I'm sure a lot of you guys, a lot of people, something COVID affected you in some form of way. And if COVID did not affect you, then hey, you, you just got lucky, and uh, kudos to you. But uh, but yeah, because of COVID. There's a lot of restrictions going on in the medical field and my office, man, the management team and all that, they were just being very whack when it comes to the, uh, the vaccinations. And uh, I don't want to go in detail about COVID and vaccines and all that. I'm sure everybody already has their, uh, how do you say, um, already knows what's good with that. But yeah, long story short, they wanted to test me. They wanted me to get back my vaccination. And I said, no, based off my research, I just felt comfortable not getting the vaccination, the, the vaccine. I didn't want to get the vaccine. Um, I did my research. Like I said, that was just my personal decision. I'm not telling anybody that that's the right decision or that's the only decision based off of my research. And I did research, trust me, I, I did my research and uh, it just wasn't the right thing for me. So finally, after going back and forth with, uh, with the management team and all that, because every single week they were pretty much saying, like, if I didn't get the vaccination, I couldn't work. Uh, oh, let me let me go let me backtrack. Before that, they pretty much put us on. We weren't working. The office was closed, so I was getting unemployment. Thank goodness for that. Unemployment was coming in. It was good. I was like, you know, everybody everybody knows what happened with that. It was a scary what, three to six months, eight months where everybody stayed home. So during that time, I was getting unemployment. It was for, it was great. Money getting paid to do nothing. Be safe. Go home. Don't 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 spread the, you know, don't spread the germs and all that good stuff so now fast forward to that after you know everybody kind of caught on that it wasn't as dangerous than what it was my office opened up once my office opened up um now they were putting restrictions on the employees like oh are you back they're asking us questions like are you vaccinated what's your status on that do you plan on getting the vaccine blah 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 if not we can provide it for you all that good all that mumble jumbo I was actually about to get vaccinated, but after doing some research, I just said it wasn't for me, just because, like I said, there was not enough data out there um, telling me or convincing me to get it. So I didn't get it. But my employer, I'm not gonna say who my employer was or what the office was, long story short, that's not important, it's irrelevant. They were pretty much saying that I had to get tested every single week. And if I didn't get tested, I couldn't work. I was cool with it, test me. As long as it's not a needle going in my arm, because I hate needles. Um, yeah, you can test me all you want. So every single week, I was spit in a in a vial. Literally, they had me spit in a vial. And uh, yeah, I wasn't testing positive. I was negative every single time. I did that for like 
I'm gonna say, what, three months or four months? And then finally, like, it wasn't enough for them. They wanted, they wanted more. They wanted my, they wanted literally more. And um, they said if I did not get the vaccination, then pretty much I couldn't work there, which I don't even think is legal. And I'm still doing my research with my lawyers and all that good stuff to find out if I got a case against them. Because as you guys already know, especially here in California, because that's where I live. I live in California. I live in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, lawsuits are going on right now because of companies that either fire people or let people go or whatever. The name, the list goes on. You're not allowed to legally fire somebody if they decide they don't want to get the vaccination. But anyways, long story short, we're not going to go into all that COVID BS because, like I said, that's that's a whole different conversation. I decided, all right, I'm not going to work there anymore. Um, I don't want to be, I don't, to me, it was like harassment, to be honest with you. I mean, like, every single week, hey, did you get your, you know, are you going to get your vaccination? Or, oh, so I said, okay. So I didn't know what I was going to do because I was kind of fed up with dentistry at that point. It was kind of like, there was all the drama that was going on with that. At the, uh, I, I was going on from all, like, I had gone through like three or four offices in like two years. And I was just kind of fed up with this. So I was like, man, I'm not trying to go back to school and do like, four, five, six years, or let's just say eight years of school. I mean, I'm 33 years old. That's just not for me. You know what I'm saying? I I, I just I just can't do it. So I did some research and it's funny because I actually had spoke to this guy uh, about trucking and he had put that in my mind. He told me the whole process, there was school and all that good stuff. And that was like two years ago. And I just, for some reason, just didn't even think about doing it because I didn't know, you know, I don't know. Like I said, new things to me, it's just like when, you know, like when you try, when someone tells you something new, and you don't know too much about it, it's kind of hard to just jump into it without knowing all the details. So but anyways, long story short, full circle, I just looked into trucking and truth behold, I'm glad I did. And here I am. Uh, I did some research on schools. You guys probably know all the good schools and all the ones you want to stay clear of. I don't want to talk too much ish about uh, a certain school that we all know about or a certain company i'm sure a lot of you truckers know what company i'm talking about but i was actually about to go to that company and it starts with the letter s and that's all i'm going to say i'm not going to say anything else but if you're in trucking you know what company that is it starts with the letter s and their trucks are blue <laughs> uh i called that school and thank goodness thank goodness the recruiter didn't get back to me on time thank goodness thank god um uh, so yeah they didn't get back to me thank god the second school I went to was CR England, which I'm wearing right now. CR England, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a vlog about I'm gonna make a vlog probably I don't know it's probably it's, not, it's probably not gonna be the next one. It's probably gonna be like a couple vlogs after this one about my experience about CR England, the full because I'm no longer there. As you guys can see, my truck is blue, and it's not it's not the blue with the S company. It's another blue company, and um, I mean I'm sure. If, for those who follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you guys know what company I'm with. But if you don't follow me on those platforms, follow me on those platforms. I have those platforms listed on my uh, on my bio, on my YouTube, and on uh, on my IG and, and then TikTok as well. But I'll probably put a link somewhere. I, I'm still learning this whole YouTube thing. I'll put a link of my uh, of my my socials on the bottom of, of this video. But yeah, follow me on that. Follow me on those uh, platforms. And you'll see what company I work for currently. But yeah, I uh, I applied for uh, what was I saying? CR England. Yeah, good old CR England. I still got the shirt. I don't know why I still wear it. It's comfortable. I'm going to wear it. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, they were great. The school was great. Um, the, the process wasn't that hard. Uh, the first step is you got to call, obviously. You got to call the 1-800 number that they have on their website. And a recruiter gets a hold of you. And that recruiter is going to talk to you about all... You know, they're going to tell you some crap. Some of that stuff, I'm going to say out of probably all the stuff my recruiter told me... 60% of it was true. 20, uh, the rest of it, 40%, was BS. But it don't matter. I was, I did my research prior, and oh, that's one thing. Do your research on the school. Don't listen to all the videos that you watch on YouTube, because there are a lot of negative people that, that everybody has different experiences. Your experience is, is going to be different than my experience, right? And your experience is going to be different than someone else's experience going into that school. So watch a few videos, right? Don't don't watch one video and that person talks a whole bunch of crap about CR England or, or whatever company that they went to and then you decide you don't want to go there, right? Everybody's experience is different. My experience with CR England with the school was great. There's two experiences with that company. The school, once you graduate from the school, then you're with the company. They hire you, right? They hire you because now you got your CDL, you're brand new, and now you can get a job with them. 
and now you automatically have a job and now they start working you. So there's two steps to it. I'm gonna go over that with another vlog, not this one, because it's gonna be long as hell. And uh, I don't wanna bore you guys with that, but it's gonna be on a different vlog. And I'm gonna be detailed as possible with my experience, with not just the school, but with the company itself. So anyways, going back to what I was saying, I did the school. Uh, I mean, I got, I talked to the recruiter, he told me all the crap. He got me into a class, I think like, the class started two weeks after I got off the phone with him. I had to get my physical done. You have to have a physical done, a DOT inspection physical. Uh, and then you gotta pass that. And then you gotta have a valid uh, driver's license. You gotta make sure you also have no, no, nothing on your background, right? Like you can't be a criminal. They won't hire criminals, unfortunately. They won't hire you if you're a criminal. So if you got a background, don't even try. You're wasting your time. They're not gonna hire you. Um, after they did a background, they, a background check, they also do a background on your, on your driving record. If you got any type of parking tickets, accidents, DUI, whatever. You better, you better make sure it's, it's not showing on your history because if it's on the history, they're going to ask you the, the details. They're going to ask you, like, when did it happen, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And so you're, you're kind of walking on, on thin ice when it comes to that if you, got, if you have a record on your driving record or if you don't have a good driving record, if you, you're speeding a lot, all that good stuff. But I didn't have a record. I was good. I had a couple little parking things that I had taken care of, and that was minor, and they, they, they brushed that off, and they hired me. And they put me into the um, the next step. Pretty much after that was um, was starting school. So once I got my physical done, I passed the physical, my background check, and my, and my I mean my, my my background check with my employment and my background check with my driving, all that clear. They sent me to my uh, they sent me to school. Their location actually is in Colton. Uh, from what I heard before, I think a couple months before they were in Fontana, but it looks like they moved from Fontana to the Colton location. So I went to the Colton location. In California because I live in California and so I went to the Colton location two weeks later started started class it was like a six-week program you're like you're doing like two weeks of class no one week of classroom and like they do like background checks drug tests all that stuff and then the second week you, you're on the road with a with a trainer uh, that, that's on the that's on the campus and then they check you off and then once they check you off then you're on the road with a driver an actual driver a leader and they show you everything uh sorry I, I gotta go back before you go with the leader you gotta pass your you gotta pass your cdl uh your cdl test your driving test uh for the dmv once you pass that dmv test or that's you get your cdl your actual cdl with the school usually after three weeks they make they, they test you um then you're good to go they send you on the road with a leader i think i got that right i hope i didn't skip a part but yeah make sure after the first week you do classroom Second week you're out with a with a trainer, then they test you on the third week, and if you pass the test on the first try, you're good to go. I think for uh, CR England they give you three tries. If you if you strike out on your three on you strike out three times, you can't come back to test until six months. So don't strike out, <laughs> don't strike out. Trust me, there was a couple people in my class that striked out, and it was sad. It was a sad story for them. I felt bad. They went to other schools to get their CDL, but they couldn't come back to, uh, to CR England to retest until six months, if they decide to come back to CRA. So anyways, going back to what I was saying, uh, once I got my CDL, I went to the DMV, they gave me a, a temporary a temporary CDL, and uh, you get your real CDL mailed to you like within six or seven weeks, which is, is a long time, but they they don't wait for you to get that. They, they send you on the road. So you get your, your temporary CDL, and you keep that on you, so then you're on the road for about two weeks, two to three weeks. I was actually on the road for three weeks. Cause something happened. I'm, I'll go in detail about that on the on the on the um, on the CR angle experience video that I'm gonna the vlog that I'm gonna post for that. But yeah, I was on the road for three weeks with my with my trainer, my leader. And it's not because I sucked. It's just because things happened and it just slowed down my process, my my whole process. Um, and so yeah, we were on the road for about three weeks. And uh, after I he checked me off, cause you know your boy know how to drive a truck, right? I'm not I'm not here to play games. I'm here to learn real quick. And, and be on the road. Once he checked me off, I went back to CR England, the campus, for upgrade. It's called upgrade. So that's when they they do like some backing maneuvers. They put you, they put you on the road, and they just test you on the things that your trainer uh, trains you on the road. They want to make sure you know everything about the tablet that they give you, and how CR England maneuvers, and also the account. I was on the Walmart account uh, with CR England, and I'm gonna go into details about that account as well. I was on the Walmart account, so yeah, they want to make sure you know all that good stuff before you hit the road. 
And then, uh, so upgrade, a little bit of upgrade. They, they took me out. I passed the driving test, uh, the driving thing, whatever, the test that they got me. Uh, the back of maneuvers, they make you do like a alley dock or like a, yeah, 45, 45. Those of you, those of you truckers know what I'm talking about, 45, 45. And then alley dock, the 90 degrees. I passed all that. And yeah, they signed me off and I was able to get my truck. And, uh, well, I was actually on teams. And I'm gonna talk about that too. What teams is, when, when, you're, when you're going on teams with like a partner, that's a whole other experience as well. So anyways, I had to link up with my partner. They gave me a partner. They assigned us a truck and they sent us off on the road. And uh, again, the next vlog, when it comes to that, I'll talk about all that good stuff. But yeah, so the whole process in general, we'll see our England from the school to hitting the road was about five to six weeks for me personally. For some of you guys that go in, it might be three or four. For me, it was about five or six, which I was cool with it because I was brand new. I had no experience prior to this driving a truck. So I took my sweet ass time to learn everything and make sure I was on point before I decided to uh, hit the road. Because we're driving a 73 foot truck, semi, and you want to make sure you got your P's and Q's in check because if anything happens, it's on you. So yeah, anyways, um, after upgrade, they sent me off on the road and that was it. So yeah, that was my experience. Uh, traffic is about to die out right now, as y'all can see. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to y'all about some other other things that happened, all that good stuff um, at the next stop, at the love stop. But um, yeah, that was my experience with the. Uh, that was like a like an ex like a quick quick overview of what happened on the steps on my experience on how I got my CDL. So I'll talk to you guys uh, when we get to the uh, when we get to the loads at the uh, fuel stop. So yeah, you guys just enjoy that that scenic route, and uh, I'll talk to you guys then. So we're about to um, hit our first weight station, or our, our, we're about to hit our first scale on our way to Colorado. There's that sign for it. And that's what it looks like on the uh, tablet. It's telling me that it's about one mile out. Once we get closer to the scale, it's gonna either tell me to bypass the scale, or it's gonna tell me to pull in. Oh, see it says follow transponder. That means, uh, yeah. So we'll see what happens when we get closer. Um, but yeah, pretty much once you get to scales, you gotta you gotta take a look and make sure that you're looking at your tablet and you're looking at your your lights over here. If, if, if it's blinking green, that means you can go and bypass it. But if it's red or if it doesn't be if it doesn't beep or say green or whatever it is or it doesn't look like it's green, you better go into that scale or you're gonna have some issues. So we're about to find out what it's gonna tell us in a bit. Right now, it's telling me to follow the transponder. So more likely that means I'm gonna have to pull in. And uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like in a bit. All right, so I'll show you guys in a bit what that looks like. All right, so I got a green beep. And that means bypass, and that means I got a bypass, so I don't have to pull in. But when you hear that, and it's green flashing like that, it means, so I, I think when it said follow transponder, that means follow this right here, the transponder. So yeah, so I don't need to go in, I don't need to pull in into the uh, scales. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get on my fast lane here. This guy's gonna let me go through. Yep, thank you. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep going. All right, guys, just wanted to show, I mean, if you're a trucker, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a trucker, then that's that's new information to you. But yeah, we got our first bypass. Thank goodness. Hopefully we get more of these bypasses so we don't have to worry about um, stopping at, at these scales because these weigh stations take a long time on your clock. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of stress. So, but all right, anyways. We got our first bypass. Good stuff. And that's what the scale. And that's what the scale looks like. It's a small scale station, but, um, but yeah, we don't have to go through there. Thank goodness. Bypass and that. But if you had to go in, that's what you're going. That's where you go in for that. For that scale. And if you're overweight, you out of luck. So you look. They got to unload right there. Is he overweight? 
Uh, let's get it. All right, so we made it to the uh, fuel stop. I'm actually gonna get some ice right now and a drink. Take a quick break. And then we're gonna hit the road. So I was going to just get some snacks and stuff and like a quick drink. I don't usually buy Red Bulls this time. Usually it's like at the end of my shift. But man, they got this new flavor. I can't wait to try it out. Hopefully it don't suck. But usually Red Bull, they got good, they got good flavors. So I'm excited to try this new flavor. I'm not even gonna wait till uh, till we get to the stop to explain all that. I'll, I'll explain to you guys right now. Uh, so yeah, I got about two two and a half hours left on my uh, on my on my clock. How do you, how do you explain it? My 30 minute DOT clock. And what that is is uh, as a trucker. Again, if you're a trucker, skip through. I'm sorry, I'm boring you. I got people that are non-truckers that follow me, and I got truckers that follow me. So if you're if you're a trucker, I'm, I'm giving you a heads up. This is something you probably already know. If you don't know it, then hey, shoot, listen up. I'll I'll got I'll give you a a good run through on something that you need to be learning or something you need to know. It's really important, which is your clock. So, anyways, like I was saying, I got about two and a half hours left on my uh, on my 30 minute DOT clock, and what that is is, as a trucker, we have to take a 30 minute DOT break, meaning. No driving, no driving for 30 minutes. It's a, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a California thing. I, I gotta do more research on it. Like I said, I'm still fairly new myself. Uh, I don't know if it's on most states do it, but I'm in California and that's where my CDL is, or that's where I got my CDL. And based off of what I was taught in school, uh, in trucking school, yeah, you gotta, t this is like a break you gotta take. There's no driving involved for 30 minutes. Uh, you have up to eight hours, like there's an eight hour clock for it. You can wait up to eight hours. I don't recommend waiting till eight hours. I usually take my break within, I'll say like four or five hours. Once I'm about four or five hours of driving, I'll take a 30 minute break off the clock today. I, I, I kind of I kind of waited last minute. I'm at two hours and 35 right now. That's kind of close. I don't usually hit it that far, but it's cause I'm trying to cruise and catch up on the lost time from earlier. You guys already know what happened earlier. Uh, yeah, I had to go back to the, the shipper all you know, you already know, but uh, that's why I'm kind of pushing it, but yeah, as soon as we get to uh, this truck stop, that's like I think 15 minutes from uh, Las Vegas, I'm gonna take my my DOT break, and that's pretty much where I'm just not driving for 30 minutes. Um, there are a lot of cheats, cheat codes for this. Um, I'll probably go over that stuff in other videos, whatever. I shoot, why not? We're talking about it right now. We're talking about it right now. Um, yeah, there are a couple of cheat codes. I mean, like I said, you guys don't have to follow my lead, and I, I mean, like I said. I'm not gonna recommend this is what I do. Again, I'm not saying this is what all truckers do, this is what I do. But um, if I wanna kinda like cruise in and I'm not have to worry about stopping constantly, um, I take a few 30 minute on duty breaks, like cargo check, you could do tire checks, you could do securement checks, gas breaks, all that good stuff. And eventually that all adds up. And that's not driving, right? Your truck is parked. So when you're on duty and you're and you're doing these uh or let's just say i'm at a shipper and it's taking way too long at the shipper like 30 minutes 40 minutes that's perfect that's actually helping that that could be considered uh part of your, your dot break your 30 minute dot break a lot of drivers don't know this um and the reason why i know is because i have a lot of guys hit me up that are uh, still in school or, or friends of mine that are going to school and they come out and that's one thing about trainers i know i'm going all over the place Trainers, leaders that take you on the road, like you know, like when you're a rookie, they they don't have time to teach you everything. Like being a trucker, there's so much to being a trucker. So they're gonna go over what they can go over. So if you don't ask questions or they didn't have a chance to go over that with you, it's it's, it's unfortunate, but you're not gonna learn everything. A lot of it you're gonna learn by by trial and error. So going back to what I was saying, you could be on duty for about an hour, hour and a half, or sometimes even two hours. And what happens is when you do that on duty time, it's still it's still, uh, how do you say it? Uh, it goes towards your DOT break because you're not driving. So I didn't know that it happened by accident. I was I was on a, I was at a yard at Walmart or a dock 
and they were taking way too long. I mean, they took an hour and a half, maybe two hours to unload me. And I was like, dang, I didn't even take my DOT break. And I was like, I think I was running close on time, like today. And I got back to the truck and I looked at my clock and it said it was it was it, it switched over to my um sorry I gotta I gotta increase my my speed truckers behind me are like what the hell are you doing bruh they don't know I'm vlogging right now <laughs> um so yeah I was at that I was at that uh Walmart and they were taking way too long to uh to unload me and like what is so this an hour and a half two hours I got back and I saw that it switched me at that point, it had switched me to my 14-hour clock, and I'm gonna go over that clock as well with you guys. Uh, you have you have a 70-hour clock. You have a you have a I'm sorry, I'm going to order. You have a 30-minute DOT clock. You have an 11-hour clock, which is your driving clock, and then you have a 14-hour clock, which is like your on-duty clock, meaning like activities that you do on duty that's not driving. And then on top of that, your overall, you have a 70-hour clock, which is your weekly clock. And I'm gonna go over all those clocks with you because I'm sure. Some of you don't even know what those clocks are, or if you're a non-trucker, you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. It's all mumbo. It's like it's like a foreign language to you. But if you're a trucker, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. So, so you have a 70 hour week of clock, meaning you can't drive over. You can't drive more than 70 hours a week. You got to take a break. Uh, I think the minimum is like 34 hours of a reset, meaning like no driving, nothing, no activities on the truck, or else you get a violation. And you don't want to get a violation. If DOT catches you with your logs. With the violation, uh, yeah, you you out of luck, you out of luck. Uh, but what was I saying before that? Uh, so yeah, we went over the thirty minute DOT clock. Oh, the next clock is the eleven hour clock. That's your drive time. You can't drive more than eleven hours a shift, ideally. I mean, trust me, if you drive eleven hours, of, I mean, at eleven hours you're tired. I mean, most drivers, I'm tired. Some truckers can go forty hours, whatever. I mean. I'm not recommending that, but legally you're not allowed to drive more than 11 hours. So that's why we have an 11 hour clock. Uh, but what happens sometimes is during the shift, depending on you know what happens, if you got to drop off, pick up, drop and hooks. A drop and hook is pretty, pretty much where you pick up a trailer at a yard and you drop it off somewhere, or you pick up a trailer at a at a at a customer and it's 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 empty and you got to take it to a shipper, vice versa. There's a lot of things that you do in between driving that people don't understand as so a trucker we have responsibilities that we have to do like that's not driving and so that falls into your on duty time which is the 14 hour clock that i was talking about earlier so sometimes what happens during your shift is you're going to be either on your 11 hour clock or your 14 hour clock if you're taking a lot of time or a lot of on duty time like you're taking a lot of breaks pee breaks uh i don't know you gotta take shit you're taking a lot of poop breaks uh whatever it is gas all that adds up eventually what happens is if you take a lot of on-duty time, which is your 14-hour clock, uh, what was I trying to say? Uh, what happens is your 14-hour clock actually runs out quicker than your 11-hour clock. Because what happens after your 30-minute DOT clock? Once you take your break or you take your, your, you, you take care of that that clock, so you don't get a violation, it switches over to your 11-hour clock, which is your drive clock. That's your normal drive clock. So that's your next clock that pops up on your tablet that you gotta keep an eye and make sure that you know you're not violating that clock. But what happens is if you're spending a lot of on-duty time, meaning you know, like I said, you're taking a lot of shit, you're taking a lot of breaks, or smoking, smoke breaks, whatever it is. Some drivers like to take a lot of breaks. I'm not the type of driver. I take the only time I stop is if I gotta take a piss, take a shit, or fuel up, or maybe like I said, uh, re re up on some snacks or or Red Bull or coffee. That's the only time I take a break, and usually it's about two times I stop on a big trip. No more than that. If it's maybe if it's more than that, it's rare. But uh, but yeah, what I was saying, I know I, I be I be I be going all over the place. Sorry if I'm losing. You. But what happens is if you take a lot of on duty time, your 14 hour clock diminishes and becomes less time than your 11 hour clock, and so that clock pops up on your tablet. If that clock pops up, it means that you're taking a lot of on duty time, and now you have to follow the 14 hour clock schedule, not your 11 hour clock. That's what I was taught. That's how I was taught. If I'm saying it wrong, you guys can comment on the on the comments below. But that's how I was taught. But uh, regardless, yeah, if your 14 hour clock becomes less than your 11 hour clock, that's the clock now that you follow for your shift. And if that one runs out, or like I said, diminishes to a point where you can't drive anymore, you gotta stop. No more. You know what I'm saying? 
So yeah, that's your 14 hour clock, which is on duty. I tell people it's like your on duty time. Let me, let me get over here because this guy in front of me, he got nowhere to be. And I got I got places to be. Oh, um, so yeah, that's I tell people 14 hour how I how I how I learned it is the 14 hour clock is the on duty time. Time that you're not driving. But eventually when you use up too much of that time, it becomes your drive time. Uh, which sucks because I think now you're working longer instead of just the 11 hours you're working like a 14 hour day and I mean as a trucker I mean for me when I first started because I was so rookie I was working a lot of 14 hour days and those suck let me tell you they suck you don't I mean you're spending a 14 hour day in the truck driving or whatever combination of driving and doing duties and all that good stuff it drains you man you do one two three by day four you're you're tapping out but like I said, that's what it is. The 14 hour clock is your on duty time. The 11 hour clock is your drive time. Well, that's your standard drive time. Your 30 minute DOT clock is your break. You gotta take at least a 30 minute break. Not driving, none of that. Like the truck's not operating, like you're off duty. There's ways to glitch it. Like I explained to you guys earlier, you could do on duty activities. If they're more than about an hour or two hours, it will count as you not being on the truck and that will make sure you're not on violation if you didn't know that i'm glad i helped you out make sure you let, let, let them know let them know in the comments that yeah yeah he knows what he's talking about oh uh, and then the 70 hour clock okay let me go over that last clock the 70 hour clock is pretty much your overall weekly clock i mean I, the, that's the clock that my company and the company that i worked for before cr england uh they both operate on that clock most carriers operate on that clock the 70 hour clock there are other companies that operate on other types of clocks like 80 and all the other stuff but i don't know i don't know anything about that i just know the 70 hour clock because that's what i've been i've been doing since i've been driving and what that is is pretty much you can't drive more than 70 hours a week if you hit that 70 hours marker or whatever like you got to make sure you shut down before the 70 hour mark you got to shut down for at least a minimum at least a minimum of uh 34 hours so that's like a day and a half which it's not that long it's not that bad but you just got to shut down wherever you're at park and just have fun do something go sightsee whatever it is but you cannot operate the truck if you operate the truck and you're, you go over the 70 you're in violation and a violation like i said earlier the dot uh any cop stops you or whatever whatever they want to see your logs and they see that you have a violation it's no good it's no good for you and uh yeah your company will either fire you or i mean, I mean some companies will, will write you up but if you have too many of those, they will let you go. Or you will get a, a nice, hefty ticket from uh, from DOT or from the police. Whoever stops you. So, yeah, don't do that. But, yeah, we uh, we about to be at that uh, that truck stop that I told you about. That's, like, 20 minutes, 15 minutes before. Um, uh, that's right before the... Um, man, I can't talk right now. I'm sorry. That's how much I need a break right now. But... Um, that's right before Vegas. And so we'll stop there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just take this quick break. This quick DOT break. And then we'll keep, keep hitting the road. Get that truck stop I told you all about. Just taking my 30 minute DOT break. In the meantime, I'm gonna make I'm gonna reheat some uh, leftover chicken from yesterday with some rice. And we're gonna try that uh, that energy drink I told y'all about that I, I haven't that seasonal they always come out with a new drink, usually in the summertime, but it came out early this year. But yeah, we're gonna try that. I can't read that. June berry flavor summer edition. I'll, I'll see if it's good. But they usually don't fail me uh, when it comes to Red Bull. They usually have great drinks, great tasting drinks. So we're gonna heat this up. Hope you're good to go in the air fryer. Shouldn't take more than 10, 15 minutes. And I'll show you guys the uh, what it looks like when it's done. This is the finished product. Some, you know, just two chicken, pieces of chicken, and some rice, some uh, avocado, avocado salsa that I got from uh, Alpha Loco. Stuff slaps, man. It's really good. Just getting some protein in. I was getting a little hungry, and I'm um, almost done with my break. And once we finish this up, we'll hit the road. And we'll be out of here. So yeah, that's the finished product. And all this took what 10-15 minutes in a air fryer. So 
truckers, you don't have to eat out. It's really simple. And I'm gonna start posting some uh, some meal ideas on my uh, on my page. If you guys need some tips on easy things you can make in an air fryer from your truck or whatever it is, just basic meals you can eat. They, that saves you one money and two healthy, and then three you don't have to eat up. You don't have to eat that nasty truck food that gets old after a while. So stay tuned. If you guys follow me, you will see those type of posts. I will be posting those videos as well. But yeah, here's a quick meal for my 30 minute DOT break. back fam uh yeah we drove a little bit more um pretty much to like the nevada arizona border i think we're in mesquite nevada i believe yeah something like that zoom in here yeah we're in like mesquite nevada and uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop right here actually we're gonna we're gonna just reset right here um about that time usually when i stop uh, i got myself a, a decent parking spot right here uh off the curb here there's like a flying there's like a flying is it flying j yeah i mean it's back there you guys can't really see it but it's walking distance so if i need to go use the restroom or you know get anything to, like snacks or whatever it is or just you know breakfast sandwiches or breakfast tomorrow morning i can get breakfast um but yeah we good uh, I'm gonna do a quick post post trip on the truck. Um, I do pre trips and post trips. This is how I was taught, uh, you know, just so that you know the truck's running smooth. Uh, you want to make sure your truck's on point. You know, these are long trips. I mean, I'm averaging about 1, 1,200 miles every two days. And, uh, my baby, she gotta she gotta be good. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I don't actually don't have a name for her yet. I'm gonna need y'all help. What do you guys think is a good name for my girl here, for my international, my 2024 international? I was gonna call her Baby Blue, but I feel like that's just, that's not original, you know? But yeah, let's do a quick post trip. What I do is I start off with the trailer, just make sure the, you know, the electrical lines and the air lines are good. And then, you know, get jacked up during the trip. It's so tight, you know? Check them tires, inside and out. Make sure that the uh, thing's still good. You know, we're good right here. Our lights are still good here. Good, good. Post trip's not that long. It's really just like an abbreviated pre-trip. Just to make sure nothing broke, nothing fell apart during the trip. You know? Um, yeah, we're still good right there. You guys can't really see it's dark out here. Oh, um, man, that Volvo looks nice. Y'all see that Volvo? I haven't driven that yet. I think that's gonna be my next baby right there. What do y'all think? Whoever's driving Volvos, let me know what y'all think. How do those Volvos drive? Do they drive smooth or not? I need to know. But they look nice. And I've seen what they look like on the interior. We still got our muff flaps on the interior. They look nice on the interior. Our ABS is still there. Our lights still work. Yep. Yeah, I heard them uh, Volvos drive nice. So, I'm curious. But yeah, let me know. So I got a mud flap there. Tires are good. And there's a lot of tires, man. It's an 18 wheeler. So I got to check all 18 wheels. Light works. What's up? What's up? So got a mud flap right here. Oh, I didn't check the. Uh, what did I forget? I think y'all know. Those who were paying attention earlier, I forgot to check the pin. The pin's on the side. I always forget for some reason. Yeah, the pins are good. Y'all can't see it, it's dark, but I see them. They're good. Um, yeah, I always forget that pin on the right side, but 
You gotta make it a habit to check both sides. Let's check this last set of tires. Man, these tires are these tires are great. All right. All right, we're good. Lights all good. No missing lights. Then I check the tractor. Make sure everything's good. Tomorrow when I do my pre-trip, I'm gonna open this up and just check to make sure there's no leaks. Make sure my fluids are all good. Um, oh, did I check this tire? And of course, the cattle guard, make sure it's tight, not loose. I don't want this falling, man. When I tell you, I went to uh, Arizona like three days ago, and this thing came down, and I didn't know it was down. It was it was messing with my right here's the radar. That's what actually controls your um, your uh, cruise control right here. It's got sensors, and it kept it kept stopping the truck, and I was like, "What's going on?" This thing was blocking the cruise control, and so my truck was all all messed up. And I didn't even realize until I got to the next truck stop and this thing was completely like low, like down right there like that. So I was like, because I'm not used to having this. This is my first time having a cattle guard on my truck, on a truck. So if you got a cattle guard, you got to, unfortunately, check to make sure that it's tight and not loose. Because if not, it's going to mess your truck up or you're going to, you're going to, you're going to hit something or who knows. It's, it's, it's no good. No, no good. But yeah, um, that's our little post trip. Uh, I'm gonna probably just go stop by the Flying J, you know, just get me some drink, some water, or whatever. Shit, I might shower, you know, make it a quick shower. Um, you know, can't be stinking, it, you know, can't be stinky. I mean, I did shower this morning, but you know, who knows? I could shower tonight, so I don't have to shower tomorrow. I just cruise it, cause tomorrow we going we gonna hit it hard, all the way to Colorado. And uh, yeah, we go, we go, we go. Try to make it tomorrow in just one trip with the full eleven, the full eleven hour clock schedule. Because uh, we don't have too many stops, you know. We don't have to worry about shipping yards and all that good stuff. So, but uh, the extra. Uh, hold on, let me swoop, let me swap this around so you guys can see me. I want to thank you guys for uh, tagging along today. Uh, I know it wasn't a full day, but um, this is. You know, I'm still new at this whole vlogging thing, but I'm gonna try my best to vlog as many videos of my trips. Um, but the next the next video or the next vlog is gonna be from here, starting from Nevada. I'm sorry, oh yeah, we're in Nevada. From Mesquite, Nevada, all the way to Colorado. And then um, that's probably gonna be the next video. And then I'll probably talk about some other things. Um, you know, like I, like I mentioned, there's some other videos I wanna make in regards of my uh, a trucking journey. Uh, I might even talk a little bit about CR England, a little bit more about them. Um, unfortunately, I did have a bad experience with them, and I kind of want to share that with everybody. I'm going to share the good and the bad. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't discriminate. But at the end of the day, I, I, you know, it's my experience. Like I said earlier in the video, it's my experience. I, I don't want anybody to take that experience and say, okay, I don't want to go to CR England, blah 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 blah. But I just want to let you guys know what happened to me. And what I didn't like about how they, you know, what they did. I'll go over that in the next video. But again, thanks for uh, tuning in with me today on this trip. On this, well, let's say, 14-hour trip. I feel like it was 20 hours. I feel like it was a 20-hour day. We started early this morning, like, like 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. And now it's about, it's like it's midnight. But, um, but yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.